Apple Incorporated, formerly Apple Computer, Incorporated, is a multinational corporation that manufactures personal computers, smartphones, tablet computers, computer peripherals, and computer software. It was the first successful personal computer company. Now, the company is headquartered in Cupertino, California, and also owns the chain of retail stores Apple Stores. It wasn't always the leader in the consumer electronics and media sales industries. There was a journey from humble beginnings. That journey is what we would be looking at in this video on Apple Company Story. Before we continue, please subscribe to our YouTube channel by hitting the subscribe button below to get a notification on our next video. Apple Incorporated was birthed from the lifelong dream of Stephen G. Wozniak to build his own computer. After the words of encouragement from his friends at the Homebrew Computer Club, Wozniak came up with a plan for his own microcomputer. In 1976, the Hewlett Packard Company, where Wozniak was an engineering intern, showed no interest in his design. Wozniak, then 26 years old, reached out to an interested former high school classmate, 21-year-old Steve Jobs. They both moved the production operations to the Jobs family garage. They eventually came up with a name for their company Apple. To raise capital, they both made contributions with Jobs selling his Volkswagen minibus and Wozniak, his programmable calculator. Their first model was basically an assembled circuit board with no basic features like keyboard, monitor, or even a case. For the 1977 model, Jobs insisted that the version should be a standalone machine in a custom-molded plastic case, unlike the forbidding steel boxes of other early machines. This model Apple II also offered a color display and other features that made it the most appealing microcomputer at the time. Jobs understood early enough that in order for the company to grow, it would require professional management and substantial funding. So, he convinced Regis McKenna, a well-known public relations specialist for the semiconductor industry, to represent the company. He was also able to bag an investment from Michael Markula, a wealthy veteran of the Intel Corporation. Michael Markula was an angel investor who later became Apple's largest shareholder and an influential member of Apple's board of directors. Shortly after, the company became successful, principally after Wozniak invented a disk controller, the Disk 2 system, that was sold at $495. This device allowed the addition of a low-cost floppy disk drive to make information storage and retrieval fast and reliable. Since the Apple II offered room to store and manipulate data, most amateur programmers preferred it. In 1979, two Bostonians Dan Brickkiln and Bob Frankston introduced the first personal computer spreadsheet, VisiCalc. This would later go on to be known as a killer app. Though VisiCalc undeniably eased the market penetration processor Apple II into the small business and consumer market, Another significant early market was primary educational institutions. With a combination of aggressive discounts and donations, coupled with an absence of any early competition, Apple established a commanding presence among educational institutions. This contributed to Apple's dominance of primary school software well into the 1990s. Apple's profits and size grew dramatically. By 1980, the company made over $100 million and had more than 1,000 employees. Its public offering in December was the biggest since 1956, when the Ford Motor Company had gone public. By the end of 1980, Apple's valuation of nearly $2 billion exceeded that of Ford. However, Apple was later faced with competition from the computer industry's leading player, International Business Machines Corporation. IBM introduced its line of personal computers, the IBM PC, in 1981. IBM PC was built from readily available components, including the Intel microprocessor, and used, disk operating system, from the Microsoft Corporation. Soon after, the new system had its killer app, the Lotus 1-2-3 spreadsheet, which won the hearts of business community, a market that the Apple II had failed to penetrate. To regain leadership, Apple came up with a sophisticated new generation of computers that would be easier to use. In 1979, Jobs led a team of engineers to see the innovations created at the Xerox Corporation's Palo Alto Research Center. 
There they were shown the first functional graphical user interface. These featured on-screen windows, a pointing device known as a mouse, and the use of icons, or pictures, unlike the awkward protocols required by all other computers. Apple fancied these ideas and immediately integrated them into two new computers. These computers were Lisa, released in 1983, and the lower-cost Macintosh, released in 1984. Jobs took over the latter project, insisting that the computer should be not merely great, but insanely great. The result was a $2,500 computer unlike any. The Macintosh was later released, but it initially sold below Apple's expectations. It was observed that the Mac had insufficient memory and storage and lacked basic features like cursor keys and a color display. As a result of the poor sales performance, Jobs was ousted from the company in September 1985 by its chief executive officer, John Scully. Meanwhile, Wozniak had left Apple in February 1985 to become a teacher. Jobs took a number of capable Apple employees with him to found Next Incorporated. They would build computers with futuristic designs, and the Unix-derived NextStep operating system. Next Step would eventually be developed into Mac OS X. Under Scully, Apple steadily improved the machine. However, the turning point for the Macintosh brand was the introduction of an affordable laser printer, along with Aldous Corporation's PageMaker, the Mac's first killer app. Together these two innovations launched the desktop publishing revolution. Because of these, small businesses and print shops could produce professional-looking brochures, pamphlets, and letters without having to resort to expensive lithographic processes. The graphic arts and publishing industries quickly became the Mac's most important market. Scully was later replaced by Michael Spindler in 1993. During Spindler's regime as CEO, the Mac OS was successfully migrated to the PowerPC microprocessor. Nevertheless, Apple struggled with marketing projections, accumulating large unsaleable inventories of some models, while simultaneously being unable to meet a billion dollars in orders for other models. They also struggled with extreme quality control problems, particularly a defective line of monitors and some highly publicized combustible portable computers. All of these shortcomings brought an end to Spindler's reign in early 1996, with the appointment of Gilbert F. Emilio. By the time Apple decided to cut operating costs and re-established quality controls, only a small percentage of new computer buyers were choosing Macs over machines running Windows, and Apple's financial situation was awful. In December 1996, to secure a replacement for the Mac's aging operating system following the company's protracted inability to produce one internally, Apple purchased Next Software Inc., the company formed by Jobs after his departure in 1985. Jobs himself was retained as an advisor to the CEO, but he quickly became dissatisfied and sold all but one share of the Apple stock he had received in the next sale. When Apple's worldwide market share fell to roughly 3% under Emilio, the board of directors, in mid-1997, recruited a surprising temporary replacement Jobs. Jobs immediately set out to revitalize the company he had co-founded. He quickly announced an alliance with one-time foe, Microsoft. Before the introduction of the iMac in 1998, all Macs were built with a special read-only memory, ROM, chip that contained part of Apple's operating system and enabled the Mac OS to run only on specific machines. The new iMac with built-in high-speed networking capabilities was designed to revive Apple's consumer and educational market sales. The iMac soon became the all-time best-selling Mac and lifted Apple's U.S. market share from a record low of 2.6% in December 1997 to roughly 13.5% in August 1998. Furthermore, Apple had a profitable fiscal year in 1998, its first since 1995. In 2001, Apple introduced iTunes, a computer program for playing music and for converting music to MP3 digital format commonly used in computers and other digital devices. That same year, Apple began selling the iPod, a portable MP3 player, which quickly dominated the market. 
Other models produced afterward featured larger storage capacities or smaller sizes, color screens, and video playback features. In April of 2003, Apple began selling downloadable copies of major record company songs in MP3 format over the Internet. By 2006, more than 1 billion songs and videos had been sold through Apple's website. In 2007, Apple launched the touchscreen iPhone, a cellular telephone with capabilities for playing MP3s and videos and for accessing the Internet. The first models were available only in conjunction with at and T's wireless service. Also, they could not be used over the latest 3G wireless networks. Apple remedied the 3G challenge in 2008 with the release of the iPhone 3G, or iPhone 2.0, which also included support for the global positioning system, GPS. The new iPhone included features appreciated by business users. Just like the original iPhone, demand was very high, and the new iPhone 3G sold 1 million units in the first three days after its launch. That same year, Apple introduced the App Store, where iPhone users could buy applications. By June 19, 2009, Apple released the iPhone 3GS, which sold 1 million units in the first three days after its release. This caused the company's share of the smartphone market to reach about 20%. Other than the hardware changes such as a 3-megapixel digital camera that can record digital videos and an internal digital compass, the iPhone 3GS included a new operating system, the iPhone OS 3.0. The new system featured support for voice-activated controls and peer-to-peer -peer play of electronic games with other iPhone users. The latter feature was one of Apple's strategy to compete in the portable gaming market with the Nintendo company's DS and the Sony Corporation's PSP. The iPhone could also be used for reading ebooks that could be purchased from the iTunes Store and Amazon.com. In 2010, Apple unveiled the iPad, a touchscreen device intermediate in size between a laptop computer and a smartphone with a display that measured 9.7 inches diagonally. It was about 0.5 inch thin and weighed 1.5 pounds. The iPad was operated with the same set of finger gestures that were used on the iPhone. And, the touch screen was capable of displaying high-definition video. The iPad also featured applications like iTunes, and could run all applications that were available for the iPhone. As a result of the collaboration with five major publishers, Penguin, HarperCollins, Simon & Schuster, Macmillan, and Hatchet, Apple developed for the iPad its own ebook application, iBooks, as well as an iBook store accessible through the Internet. In 2011, Apple introduced iCloud, a cloud computing service in which a user's applications, photographs, documents, calendars, and recently purchased music would be stored and automatically updated in the user's other devices. Because of ill health, Jobs resigned as CEO in August 2011 and was succeeded by Chief Operating Office, Tim Cook. Jobs died after his long battle with pancreatic cancer on 5 October. In the early years of Cook's tenure, Apple did not launch any entirely new products. However, they brought out new versions of previous products, such as the iPhone 4S, which contained a personal assistant program, Siri. Siri was launched in 2011, and it could respond to spoken commands and questions. The iPad Mini, a smaller version of the iPad was released in 2012, and the iPad Pro, a large version of the iPad intended for business use in 2015. In 2014, Apple made its largest acquisition by buying the headphone manufacturer and music streaming company, Beats, for $3 billion. In 2015, Apple introduced a smartwatch, known as the Apple Watch. A redesign of the watch with a sensor that could make electrocardiograms, ECGs, was presented as Series 4 in 2018. In 2016, AirPods, a set of wireless earphones, were introduced and became a top seller in that market. Because of the popularity of the iPhone, in 2018, Apple became the first company to reach a value of $1 trillion. Two years later, Apple became the first company to double that figure. In 2020, Apple introduced its own microprocessor, the M1, for Macintosh computers, as they had previously used Intel chips. 
The M1 was one of the fastest microprocessors available and was designed to be fast even with less power than previous chips. In September of 2020, the iPhone 12, 12 Pro, and 12 Pro Max were introduced as the first iPhones to support 5G. In November of 2020, the first Macs with Apple Silicon were launched. The Mac Mini, MacBook Air and MacBook Pro all featured Apple's M1 chip that was based on the previous A14 Bionic chip. What do you think about the Apple company story? Which amazing product do you think will be released next? Thanks for watching this video. Please share your opinions in the comments section below, and remember to click the subscribe button to be the first person to watch new videos on this channel.